America Mineral Fields, providing excellent investment opportunities through the exploration and the mining of world-class mineral deposits. In October of 1995, America Mineral Fields was founded by Jean Raymond Boulle. Previously, Mr. Boulle was the co-founder with Michael McMurrah of Diamond Fields Resources. The expertise of Jean Boulle and the management team was amply demonstrated through the discovery at Voices Bay, Labrador of the rich nickel, copper, cobalt ore body. Diamond Fields Resources sold the mining rights to Canada's Inco for an unprecedented 4.3 billion Canadian dollars. The nucleus of the team responsible for the success of Diamond Field Resources has joined Mr. Boole in forming America Mineral Fields, giving the company an experienced management team with an efficient working relationship. People involved are all ex-De uh, Beers, ex-Anglo, ex-RTZ, ex which are all very large uh, multi-billion dollar companies. And, uh, but, and in addition to that, most of the people involved were also with Diamond Fields. So really, this is a continuation of diamond fields. We have lawyers, accountants, geologists, engineers, entrepreneurs. The team has been successful before, as, as we know. The team has set out to acquire, for its stockholders, world-class deposits. There's such a resource of, uh, of knowledge and technical skills in the world that we feel like we're better off to keep a small core group evaluating projects and that way we can shift the expertise from commodity to commodity to, to get the better portions in to deal with the uh, specific commodity rather than having people dealing in commodities that they're not used to working with. Now the real challenge is to build the team to a position of strength sufficient to enable those deposits to be developed and the projects to be developed and carried forward once again to maximize the potential of the, of the company to, and, uh, and its value to the stockholders. Uh, with a view to doing that, we will assemble around us in the process of doing that the best that we can get from wherever they come from. American Mineral Fields' primary focus is the acquisition and development of world-class mineral deposits. Two diamond properties in Brazil were the first projects acquired and are owned entirely by American Mineral Fields, the Chapada regions and the Santo Anasio with a combined area of 3,000 hectares containing an estimated resource of over 6.6 .6 million cubic meters with an overall grade of 0 0.038 carats per cubic meter. The contained alluvial diamonds have a realization value of between 250 and 300 US dollars per carat. More recently, America Mineral Fields has focused much of its efforts on the vast opportunities that Central Africa holds. Known for its rich and vibrant cultures, astonishing natural wonders, and marvelous variety of animal habitats, Central Africa also possesses incredible high-grade mineral resources. America Mineral Fields was recently requested to organize and invite a group of investment bankers and analysts from throughout the world to meet with the new cabinet ministers of the Democratic Republic of Congo. America Mineral Fields representatives and the investment group were then invited to attend a historic meeting with President Loren Kabila where he expressed his desire for more foreign investment as part of his plans for the new Congo. Uh, the uh, we have to develop it. In partnership with investors. Uh, and I think that uh, Mr. Boom knows already our policy about that. Uh, we would like to have a lot of investment. We are determined to rebuild our country. With your contribution. With your contribution. Your participation. Your participation. Nice. Thank you very much for having us. It's really been great. And the best it for the future and let's you. keep in touch if you need yeah. us for anything. The government alone is not going to be able to resolve all of the problems that the area possesses. It's going to take public-private partnership and it's going to take a strong business climate and strong investment. Investment though with a social conscience. Investment that cares about the environment, the work conditions, 
and of course the people and the government of the area. The way for the Congo to reach any level of economic maturity is by bringing more and more miners in, financing mining projects down the southern portion and throughout all of the Congo. Uh, their return to, to a stable economic environment will be through mining. If you take the company American Mineral Fields here, it's a great opportunity for the country, it's a great opportunity for, for potential investors. As a small, small investor, I would see it as a win-win a situation for everyone involved. Because of Jean Boulle's foresight and early interest in the Copper Belt region, America Mineral Fields was able to enter into a government-ratified agreement with Jacob Mines, the state-owned mining company responsible for the Democratic Republic of Congo's immense mineral wealth. America Mineral Fields has focused on three projects in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The Kolwezi Tailings, the Kapushi Mine and Tailings, and an enormous area devoted to exploration for new deposits. The Kolwezi tailings are considered to be the jewel in the crown of Jacobine's properties. At a site in the heart of the Copper Belt, the project will entail reprocessing and extracting previously unrecovered copper and cobalt from the historical waste products. Known as tailings, these high-grade sands remain from over half a century of mining and treatment of Jacobine's oxide ore bodies at Kolwezi. America Mineral Fields will acquire a 51% ownership and Jacob Mines 49% of the new operating company. This jewel comprises three tailings dumps with a total resource of 108 million tons. At Kingamyambo, 60.5 million tons. And at Kasobantu, 32.2 million tons are stacked approximately 20 meters high above the ground, making it easy and cheap to excavate them for transport and reprocessing. In the Musamoy Valley, 11.8 million tons will be recovered in the most cost-effective way for processing, by dredging. Compared to what was possible decades ago, today's technological advancements allow for improved extraction of metals. Presently, a drilling program is yielding samples which will be used to confirm previous mineralogical studies, assays, and expected recovery rates. Jacob Mines has estimated average grades of 1.34% copper and 0.26% cobalt, and the Kolwezi tailings project could produce 50,000 tons of copper and 6,000 tons of cobalt annually. Current cobalt prices of around $20 per pound may decline in the future as world supply of the metal increases, but at only $8 and less per pound for cobalt and 95 cents per pound for copper, the project has the potential to generate over 16 billion U.S. dollars and be one of the world's lowest cost producers. The total capital expenditure, including fees to Jacob Mines and the cost of the processing plant to operate to the highest environmental standards, is estimated at approximately $300 million. The initial costs are thought to be recoverable within the first 24 months of operation. America Mineral Fields is understandably excited to have been awarded this project in partnership with Jacob Mines. It's on a 1 to 10 geological potential, it's probably an 11. That there's there's almost nothing like Zaire. Um, the the copper belt that shared between Zambia and Zaire has always been known as as one of the richest in the world, if not the richest. The importance of the Kowasi tailings is that it's already been mined. There, there's no mining. There's no uh, there's no underground expense, and it's just uh, it was just done back in the the mine was started back in the early 1900s, and. Uh, at that point in time, the technology for recovering all the copper and the cobalt didn't exist, and they didn't need to exist because the mine was extremely rich. And uh, it's just such a, a wonderful opportunity. Somebody's already mined it for you, and we still get the profits. And 
uh, without the tremendous expense that's usually associated with it. The chemistry of the, uh, the metal, the recovery of it, are, is all under proven process, and it's just and it's such a large reserve that it's just a, it's just an ideal project for the company. <laughs> Located just outside of Lubumbashi is what many consider to be the richest zinc deposit in the world, the Kapushi Mine, which has also been awarded to America Mineral Fields. In June of 1997, America Mineral Fields completed a pre-feasibility study and is commencing detailed feasibility studies estimated to take 12 to 24 months. A little over 10 years ago, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Zaire, produced over 500,000 tons of copper annually. Because of a variety of internal factors, especially the lack of funds, production had declined to one-tenth by 1993. Kapushi Mine experienced a similar decline in zinc and copper production, finally closing in 1993. Kapushi is estimated to possess mineable reserves of 22.6 million tons, grading 2.1% copper and 13.8% zinc with an in situ value of 4.5 billion US dollars. Prior to closure in 1993, the lowest level of mine production was at 1,295 meters below surface with an access ramp completed down to 1,330 meters or was trammed on the 1,150 meter level to the number five shaft for hoisting to the surface at a rate of 1.5 million tons of ore per year. The shaft's control room uses advanced circuitry and modern equipment. To minimize pumping costs throughout the mine, a state-of-the-art pumping station was installed a few years ago at a cost of 50 million US dollars. Its capacity allows it to pump to surface three times the peak water inflow. Led by the highly capable Jacob Mines management team, a skeleton workforce maintains the mine in a state of readiness to resume operation. Previously, approximately 1,800 workers were employed underground, with another 1,200 in supporting services. The philosophy implemented by Jacob Mines is to provide more jobs, spreading the wealth, rather than pay a minimum crew more. Because of this philosophy, the men and women of the mine are diligent and loyal workers, with an admirable work ethic. It is estimated that a total expenditure of 30 million US dollars on the mine and on related metallurgical facilities at Lakasi and Kolwezi would be sufficient for a return to operation. Although all workable items of equipment such as locomotives, mine cars and drill jumbos were removed from Kapushi by Jacob Mines, the replacement would allow production of zinc and copper to be recommenced very quickly. This contract is very important. It's important because obviously it's a very important zinc mine in terms of, in world terms. But it's also important because it's a key to the mineral sector in the copper belt, in that it will produce the sulfuric acid for our Colwazi tailings. And I think that's the key is that this project works beautifully with Colwazi tailings. And I think that's the importance of it. This is a gold-plated mine. There's, there's no other way of describing it. As part of the exclusive Kapushi Framework Agreement with Jacob Mines, America Mineral Fields has also been awarded the Kapushi Tailings Project, the accumulation of 70 years worth of production. The 25 million tons of tailings are estimated to grade at 0.35% copper and 2.25% zinc. 
America Mineral Fields has also commenced work on the feasibility of construction and operation of a smelter and acid plant at Kapushi to treat zinc concentrates from a future expanded mine operation. The project is important to America Mineral Fields' long-term plans for Central Africa. The proposed smelter could produce 200,000 tons of zinc and 30,000 tons of copper per year. A byproduct would be 400,000 tons of sulfuric acid annually. Kipushi is believed to be the largest single potential source of sulfuric acid in the country. The amount produced would be more than necessary for the Kolwezi tailings project. It could also serve in the treatment of any new oxide deposits or could generate revenue through its sale to other mining companies. The byproduct of sulfur is just, uh, it's, it's a must for almost every mining operation there. It's a, it's a big event in the Kowasi project. Uh, we'll use a tremendous amount of sulfur there and our ability to produce sulfur at this means that we just won't have to pay the premium prices and, and the prices are premium generally speaking because there's not an acid plant such in, in the Katanga area and it has to be imported and the transportation cost will be eliminated which uh, gives us a tremendous edge in the, in the production and cost. In addition to the mining projects, America Mineral Fields has an exclusive contract granting exploration rights. The exploration land package includes large areas prospective for copper and cobalt to the south and gold and tin to the northwest. This area has been subjected to very little prospecting since the 1960s. With the latest advancements in exploration technology, America Mineral Fields is excited about the immense potential held by this mineral-rich area. If you're looking for large high-grade de deposits, um, the Congo has some of the highest grade deposits and the largest in the world. And generally these things come in clusters. Uh, it's, a pro it's a province, so where you have one, you're going to find some more. And there's not been any proper exploration done with modern methods uh, in this huge uh, area. And this will be the first time. So we're very hopeful and very excited about it, frankly. The exploration rights, it's a vast, huge, untapped resource. We have reason to believe that there are potentially two, three, four world-class deposits which, which could be developed to world-class mines. It's, it's, uh, it's just enormous, the potential. At a depth of 2,000 meters, the plunging Kapushi ore body extends over the international border into Zambia. Through its wholly owned subsidiary, Zamgold, America Mineral Fields has been granted an exploration license to explore in the Solwezi region of Zambia opposite Kapushi Mine for base and precious metals. Extending its interest in the rich Central African mineral belt, America Mineral Fields has the option of entering into a 50-50 partnership with IDIS Resources which in turn has a joint venture with the Angolan state-owned mining company, Ndiyama. The focus of the concession is the Kuango River, located in the northeastern part of Angola. Substantial amounts of high-quality alluvial diamonds have been mined historically from this 36,000 square kilometer area. Two of the largest diamonds ever found in Angola, measuring 105.9 and 101.8 carats respectively, came from this area. America Mineral Fields has a proven management team and sound financial backing. America Mineral Fields common stock was accepted for listing on the Toronto Stock Exchange in October of 1996. It trades under the symbol AMZ. We believe that if one makes an early investment in a number of these nation states, one can develop a very good rapport with the governments and the opportunity uh, for a mutual profit-sharing relationship is very high. There are copper deposits in this country that uh, mining, mining companies around the world would die for. I mean, there are companies, North American mining companies, that go up 4,000 meters elevation in the Andes to find a 1% uh, copper ore body. And they have oxide resources here, 4%, 5%. It's, it's just, it's, it's absolutely remarkable. You are getting in on the ground floor. I mean, it's a two-year-old company. Uh, not, a, not even two-year-old company. So you're getting in on the ground floor. The important fact is that the largest shareholder 
is obviously a very, uh, uh, Jean is a very powerful in the mining industry and he's backing us all the way. And I think we've shown to our shareholders that we will go to the nth degree to create shareholder value. I'm, I'm tremendously excited about uh, American Mineral Fields. I think it's got a great opportunity. I think you know, um, we, we are, I guess we can say that we're more, even more excited than uh, when we had started Diamond Fields. I mean, Diamond Fields um, um, worked out great, obviously, but we, even when we were forming the company, we never had anywhere near the, the potential or the assets that we have in American Mineral Fields. It is that big. It, it is just the potential here is absolutely enormous. So I think that uh, there are risks. But uh, you are getting in at the, at the very beginning, the very early stage. And uh, so that's what excites us about this particular project. All the ingredients are there for this to be a, quite a spectacular success.